Good morning, and welcome to the Community Church of Glen Rock's online worship service. Here we are at the start of another week of our stay-at-home preventative measures. We've heard all the negative facts, figures, and news stories about the virus, but I want to focus on the positive. And believe it or not, there are positives to be found amidst all this heartache. In my once-a-day routine of getting outdoors and taking a ride on a bike or, or taking a walk, I've noticed something that I haven't seen since moving to Glen Rock four and a half years ago. People are out in their yards, keeping their social distance, but talking with neighbors and passerbys. They're more willing to let that smile be shared with others, more generous with those welcoming words. You see families out doing things together as a family. And I have to say that it's, it's refreshing to discover all these new signs of life in the neighborhood. So, whether it's the senior social walk at five o'clock or that never-ending family game of Monopoly, may we all keep our spirits up and continue to lift each other, not only during this time of trial, but each and every day of our lives. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for being a part of our lives. We ask for your continued presence in our lives and in the life of this world that we live in, for we know a great number of people are suffering, a number of people that have been afflicted by this horrible disease that is spreading worldwide. 
We ask God that you will be with the doctors, nurses, and caregivers who are on the front lines of dealing with this virus. Be with the, the medical professionals and the scientists who are, who are trying desperately to find a vaccine for this virus. And we pray, God, for all the people in our community, those who have been afflicted by the virus, those who have been put into uncomfortable situations because of the measures we must take moving forward. Help us to realize, Lord, that it is your grace and your will that will be done, that you will act in your time, and we only need to be patient and hopeful and remain prayerful through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 32 through 45. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Couldn't you have prevented this tragedy in the first place? How many of you have asked God that question in the past three weeks? I know I have, and I'm sure many of you probably have as well. It's part of our human nature that we have to do so. Today's Gospel lesson asks the same question that humankind has presented God with for thousands of years. And in the story of Lazarus, it's asked not only once, but three times. When her brother Lazarus became sick, Mary asked Jesus for help. But Jesus, hearing of his friend's illness, did not respond immediately. He reasoned, in essence, that God had a greater purpose. Everything would be okay in God's hands. By the time Jesus finally arrived in Bethany, Lazarus had been dead and buried for at least four days. Martha met Jesus on the way into town and cried out, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Imagine the pain and frustration she must have experienced. Mary, when called by her sister, went to Jesus and said the exact same thing. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Amidst the agony and the grief, the tears, 
some of the neighbors mumbled their own disappointment. Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Could he not have prevented all this pain and heartache in the coronavirus? Jesus doesn't attempt to disarm their question or ours. Instead, in the shortest verse in the entire Bible, he reveals one of the most important characteristics we can ever learn about the heart of God. Jesus wept. When Jesus experienced the sisters Mary and Martha weeping for their dead brother Lazarus and their distraught neighbors, John writes that he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. The God whom Christians worship is not some distant God that we place way off in the ethos. No, God is a tender God who is deeply moved, even grieved by anything and everything that threatens our human well-being. This compassionate and empathetic nature of God is the reason why scriptures encourage us to bring to him our last our anguish and danger. Tell God of your confusion and anxiety over this current pandemic. Since the coronavirus, there has been no lack of opinions. There were the lighthearted jokes early on and dismissive observations were many. But as the numbers have continued to climb and the virus has taken its toll right here at home, there's been no shortage of blame and accomplishments being tossed around. Above all else has been the anxiety over the severity of the situation. People are asking, how could this have happened? Indifference is not a very common Christian virtue when we are faced with human tragedy. Like Mary and Martha and their neighbors, we want to cry out. The psalmist demonstrates this sort of primal scream that we place in God's hands. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. And we can be assured God does hear us. We can pray to God like this because we know that God weeps when we weep. We place our hope in the divine because God is a God of unfailing love and full of redemption. God doesn't only empathize with our many pains and sorrows, God also acts. Jesus wept with Mary and Martha and then raised Lazarus from the dead. This was his last miracle before his own death and resurrection. Human experience tells us though that God doesn't act exactly when, where, and how we think God should act. So we must wait in hope. Part of our Christian maturity involves learning to wait. And that's not very easy with the I want it now world that we live in. However, we ought to be confident. Not so much about our chances for a rosy outcome from the virus we are fighting, or about exactly where, when, and how God will act, but confident that God will act. We wait in hope, even while we cry out in the depths to God about the injustice of it all. What's the alternative? To lose hope and succumb to despair? 
no matter how tempting, no matter how human, no matter how understandable. Hopeless despair is not a Christian place where we can live. Winter never lasts forever. Spring does come. Our current Lenten darkness, repentance and sorrow have their rightful place with us. But the Easter resurrection is our destiny. However difficult our current circumstances, however agonizing our questions about global illness, lockdowns, lack of supplies at the hospital, or economic disaster, ultimately they pale to the loss of life. But Christian faith believes that God and Christ will conquer and transform even the ultimate loss. And so we press on. For the time being, we confidently cast every anxiety upon God because we know that God cares about us. And we know that for every dark Friday, there's a resurrection Sunday. Let us pray. Gracious and caring God, in everything we do, help us to place our hope in you. For you are the great healer. You are the true redeemer. You are the omnipotent one who lives in eternity. Amen.
And now, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, be with you as you leave here today to spread the word of the Lord.